not a bad fish. You better hoss him, man. Sunday afternoon, y'all. Excuse me, I gotta swallow that uh, triple bacon cheeseburger I just ate from uh, Hardee's. So uh, we were supposed to be headed over to the Cumberland River August the today, which is the 7th and the 8th, to fish with my friends Seth and John for striped bass. But they have just gotten a massive ton of rain over there the past couple days. And the river's just straight up chocolate milk. So it just wasn't really conducive to striper fishing or the type of striper fishing we wanted to do uh, so we have called an audible now and i loaded up the truck and the boat and we are headed down to alabama baby and we're gonna be fishing on a river i have never been to never fished on and uh, we're gonna be chasing primarily flathead catfish but maybe blue catfish as well maybe pick up a channel um, i don't have any bait at all none and uh, again have never been here However, our boy Lonis, if you've watched any of my previous videos, the big bearded man is down here and uh, he's fished on it a couple of times. So we're gonna to try to catch some bluegill for bait. We may throw the cast net for some shad or red horse sucker or something like that. But we're gonna just try to get some fresh fish uh, for cut bait. If we catch a bass that's keeper size and it's legal to keep them down here and use it for bait, we'll use that. Uh, but primarily we're targeting panfish for our bait. And then we're gonna fish really heavy cover, trees, rock piles, uh, stuff like that for these flathead catfish that are now coming off of the spawn. If you haven't seen a video from me in about a week or so, cause I've just been slam packed at work and had a bunch of personal stuff going on outside of work and fishing that I had to take care of. And uh, I'm about to go nuts. So when the Cumberland River trip fell apart, I was just like, I don't care. I'm getting out of Knoxville and we're going on an adventure and I'm taking you guys along with me. I hope we catch a big fish. If we don't, I don't really care. It's beautiful out here. I'm excited to go to hang out with my buddy. And uh, today we're fishing the Coosa. Tomorrow I'm gonna fish Chattanooga area, Nick and Jack Lake, and uh, target some big blue cats there. And uh, we're just gonna kinda see what happens, but uh, come along with me. And uh, I hope we catch a big one, cause that'd be really cool. Well, we've made it down to Alabama, or I have made it down to Alabama, and we are right now not really in the middle of nowhere, but we're about to be in the middle of nowhere. And where this boat launch is at, there's no coordinates. So, Lonis be driving. Big game energy, baby. And uh, we're gonna try to catch some fish. We down in Dixie, baby, holy crap. Mm -hmm. There ain't nothing out here, and I like it a lot, especially being around people for eight days at work in a row. Oh, so you're down in Bama when you got the Bucky shirt on God. In the semi-dirt road, there's no parking spots at the ramp, and then there's a field of something out here, everywhere. It'd be fishing time. It's hot. We down here on the river, baby. Not really the the scene we're used to because there ain't no daggum people out here but i'm about it a little janky old boat launch a little winding river through the hills down here in alabama we're gonna go searching for some heavy cover for some flatheads i got a dam upstream here i turned on at 10 or 11 something like that so we got some current which is good stained water so these fish may come up a little bit shallow so uh, we'll kind of see what happens and it's five billion degrees down here and that's a sizzling pad for your butt. The 
so we came all the way down here with no bait so we taking it back to olden days to the olden days and catching bluegill <laughs> unless you just got a an inshore rod to use for like snook and stuff like that and like right in the tree oh yeah <laughs> anyways we catching bait we trying Okay. See if I can catch me old little bluegill. Mr. Shale Cracker. I don't think I got it close enough. Where are the blue gill at? Told you I got hit. Right Come on. Good one. Good one. These are little guys. Yep. Single baiters. This looks like bluegill paradise. Welcome to bluegill paradise. Oh god. Oh yeah, dude. Back in there? Yeah. Get out of here. We gonna scooch back on in here, folks. Look, they got rod holders all along on those that posts. So <laughs> that's great. That's what I would do. If I lived on the river, that's what I would have. They got metal posts in the rocks with drift masters on top of it. Except if it was you, there'd be 40 of them. I was about to say, so was there seven right there? Maybe multiply that times four? Yes. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Missed him, but yeah. I did good, dude. <laughs> I swear. If, if something can go wrong with Mark Cooper, it will. <laughs> oh, hey, hey, I'm just seasoning them. Another <laughs> dirty. God, I'm mighty. That's my Yeti. <laughs> Got him. Pretty close. close.
There they are. Shit. Oh, that's cool green sun Bro, here they are. I was about to say, I just saw that. You're just reeling in, weren't you? I just threw it in immediately. <laughs> there he was. We have found the titty bram honey hole. See, we can't get one right here. Brings me back to my childhood. There's a good one. Watch the 1100 fishing rods. Huh? I said watch the 1100 fishing rods. Yeah. Oh God, we prepared. Kind of like when you're packing your vacation, you plan on shooting yourself like twice a day. Yep. You plan on breaking each rod off like three times. But it's me. So that's a fair assumption, I feel like. He said, you know what I'm not going to stand for is tying a new rig on the boat. I'm going to have a whole new rod and reel. $400 set up. Absolutely. There will be no wasted time. <laughs> Trying to get into wormies. That's the right place. An upset rooster up there. Cock a doodle doo. <coughs> well, that hook has bent all the crap, but whatever. I love catching bluegill. Now. I was hating it earlier. Yeah. Give him a little free taste. Did what? you catch this one? Yeah. <laughs> I think he jumped out. Yoink. Oh, missed him. about to do a little anchor fishing for flatheads we've taken our side scan and those waypoints right there are just some trees on the bottom and a couple little logs laying on the bottom as well and just all over the place right there you gotta get ye old bucket now now yeah look sunscreen oh yeah All right, all right, all right. So we are baiting up with uh, the fresh bluegill, yes. And we're gonna cut whole baits basically, put them out there in front of them trees and hopefully a big old flathead comes and eats it. Or a giant blue, that'd be fine too. Be all right with that. So we're gonna take these big old bluegill. We're just gonna hook them right up through the nose like that. Throw the whole sucker out there. 
we have to lock with the rock with the drag pretty tight because these fish will just take you straight into it we got real good flow out here right now so uh they're gonna be able to to a degree do what they want a little bit yeah so we're gonna have that drag pretty tight You got some mortgage board, uh, big old gills. Trying to be relatively accurate with these casts because if you get it in that tree, it's done for. Those trees are right as it drops down, they're like 26, 29, somewhere in there. I'm gonna put these clickers on just so whenever we get a takedown, you can hear it pulling drag, ideally. Smaller hook, smaller gill. Sometimes a big fish will want a big bait and sometimes they'll want a little one. So we'll throw both and let them decide. I don't know what kind of daggum swivel sinker thing Lawrence has got on here, but it's pretty overkill. <laughs> nah, dude, it's the one that's gonna get bit. And then this concoction of whatever this is. Hey, don't hurt. No. <laughs> hey, you guys, you wanna go fishing? <laughs> wanna go fishing? Okay, this is a, an interesting rig. One's gonna get bit. It probably will be. I could see it happening. So we're doing a little something silly on this one, all right? We got a double hook rig, obviously these bluegill are not large enough to do one bait on one. So we're gonna put a head on one, just kinda like to tease them in a little bit, all right? We're gonna put a hole at bluegill on the bottom. It'd probably get bit if it had a rattle on it. <laughs> probably. Now, if your one rod with the concoction on it <laughs> is the one that gets bit all night, I will secede the point. Yeah. But until then, I'm going for the carpet bomb rig. Middle of the channel? Yep. That's gonna get crushed by blue. Yeah. Uh -huh. Bonk. Yeah, we need like Mark Cooper drag plus one. Yeah. Like if that if Mogo's got 25 pounds of drag. We need 26. About, yeah. Or roughly 24 maybe. Just to give you a pound to play with. Yeah. Sometimes you gotta have a pound to play That's with. That's what I'm saying, man. 16 ounces. <laughs> The rods we got rocking out here and the reels are all basically low profile reels, Okuma Komodos. Uh, the rods are, the green ones are the Hellcats, medium heavy and mediums. And then the black one over there is a heavy Big Cat Fever model. And we've got the drag cranked pretty much all the way down on these because when those flatheads hit in this flow, they go straight back into the current and you gotta rip them out of it. Lois has already gotten his heart broken here once. Yes. So uh, we got the drag cranked down pretty good. We're gonna get them out of it and then we'll loosen it back up so we don't bend the hook out or you know, rip the, rip the hook out of their cheek, which can happen. So we're just gonna be chilling for 30, 45 minutes a spot, see what happens and then bump down to another one. And then we got the Bucky's. It's a vibe. Your explanations of what you did here. It's this is just the black coffee seasoning and the Yeti. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently I brought a rod without a reel on it too. They just Oh yeah. 
<laughs> Good for it. You can only fish with three rods a person out here at a time, so we just have six out the back, three for me, three for Lonis. And these are just our backups. Because by God, I ain't tying another rig. No, it's out of the question. We got a new net, and wouldn't you know, it's deformed. But they gave us 10% off That's at Academy. Right. The first fish of the day is a 12-foot log. That looks awfully fishy to me. Oh, look, there's another one. That big mamma jamma tree is like right back here, 46 feet. So I'm just chunking these baits out real quick. We're right here at, right here at dusk. And I'm excited about this spot. This is the deepest water in the whole river over here. It's like 50 feet. And this tree's like right on the side of the break line of it. So this is, this is the juice. This is the juice. Oh yeah, gotta love the pontoon. Right when we get set up. A little dink, dinking on it. Oh, oh, that looks like a flathead. Put it down, no. don't want him to swim us into this tree. Yep. Nah, he came upstream with it, I think. No. Dang it. I'm gonna throw a fresh head back out there. That looks awful like a garbite up there to me. Something like that. Just a dinking on it. Come on. Eat it. Put it down? What the heck? That gum it. That looked like it was going to be a good fish. Carried it pretty far up there. Oh, we got one dinking on it. Is he still on it? Yeah, it looks like it. Ah, oh, into the tree. Dang it. Took us into the tree. That sucks. Maybe we let him swim out. Ain't nothing like rolling down the river in the middle of that. No, I don't. Did you? Yeah. Dang. No bait left on it. 
I'd cut some more. Oh my gosh, just eat it. I would like to catch a fish. I'm gonna reel down on him. Not a bad fish. Nope. You better hoss him, man. It's definitely a flat. Is it? Yeah. He took some drag on that hook set. Yeah? Yeah. He don't look bad. No, I'm trying to figure out where he's at on the Coming upstream now. We got one hooked up finally. Gosh. Is he pulling line? No, not right now. He did at first though. Just keep him buttoned. Yeah. I backed the drag off just a little bit because he's at least right now out of the danger zone. He's staying down pretty good, man. Yeah, I'm hoping he grows up. I don't really like this squirrel little head shake. But... Oh, he's digging. He's digging. He's trying to dig now. when you get to the boat and they do this. Yep. Definitely a flat, I think. How big he is, I don't know. Come here. There's a little bit of drag. A little bit of drag. I'm happy to have him, finally. to start biting at 11 o'clock. That's a good one, dude. Yeah. Nice flat. Got that spawn mark on his head. <laughs> that was cool, man. Let's get that out of the way. Very nice. All right. I'm soaked. Yeah. That was cool. Nice fish. Nice fish. Heck yeah. He ate the bluegill head. What's wrong with your net there, buddy? Mm, that was a 10% offer. In, uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's the top knock fishing special right there. A little bit deformed, but it works. Look, we got some water in the bottom of the boat. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah. Thank you. He's a light colored flathead. Yeah. That's your first coosa pig, man. My first coosa cat. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. Beautiful place down here. Ain't no people anywhere, pretty much. Look at that. Nice little hook set. Got him. He that the head right there. Alrighty, take a picture with him. Alrighty guys, nice Coosa River flathead right there. Beautiful fish. Love catching these guys. Big dudes. Big old mouth. Ah, insert fish. Alright, we're going to release her. I guess over here is good.
That was cool. Heck yeah. Yeah, All dude. Righty. Let's get another big one. Oh. Walk up there slowly. You put it down. Butthead. Well, this has got one that's just been tapping on it up there. That rod right there. It's been doing this for like five minutes. Awful turly. Or it could be a flathead. What do you think it is? I think it's a turtle. Thank <laughs> you.